Here is a Behringer MX1602 audio mixer, completely taken apart. This had problems, and it was all due to this power brick. This has a transformer inside, with one output winding, which has a center tap for a symmetric power supply. It outputs two times 18.5 volts, at least in theory. We'll get to that. And originally, it was fused. Now, normally, what you would do when you have a center-tapped output winding, you would put a fuse into each end of the winding, so two fuses in total. Beringer decided to go with a totally dumb measure of cost-cutting. They put only one fuse into the center tab. There it is. It's a 1.6 ampere fuse, and this has gone open. Now, the consequence of this fuse going open is that the mixer lost its ground reference. It did not lose its power supply because the voltage from one end of the winding to the other was still present. Only the center tap had been cut off. Now, the circuit inside the mixer, without a ground reference, is just simply going to create its own virtual ground, which is, of course, not at ground potential. It's at some random potential, and in this case, measured at the smoothing capacitors, what was supposed to be plus and minus 30 volts turned into plus 8 and minus 52 volts. It's a miracle that this didn't cause any serious damage. For example, the filter capacitor that had the 52 volts across it is only rated 35 volts, so that could have easily exploded. Well, that problem has been taken care of, but there is now another problem. The voltage regulators over here, as you can see, are attached to some rather large temporary heat sinks. These are an LM317 for the phantom power supply, and a 7815 and a 7915 for a plus and minus 15 volts main supply which I didn't have in stock, so I have replaced them with a 7812 and a 7912, just for testing. And even attached to these relatively large heat sinks, these voltage regulators still get insanely hot. Let's see if I can measure some temperatures here. This will probably be very inaccurate, but Let's at least give it a try. Maximum temperature, as you can see, is almost 70 degrees Celsius, and that is too much, especially because, as you can see over here, when the mixer is fully assembled, the voltage regulators are just attached to this sheet metal case for cooling. So that's not going to be nearly as effective as these heat sinks over there. And this overheating issue may have been the root cause of all problems. Maybe one of these voltage regulators finally overheated and went bad, and that was what caused the fuse in the power brick to go open. So something needs to be done about this overheating issue, and that takes us back to the power brick. Earlier on, I said that this is supposed to output 2 times 18.5 volts. Well, if you measure it, it outputs 2 times 20 volts. So I connected the power brick to the variac and reduced the input voltage, and it turns out if you reduce the input voltage to 220 volts, the output is precisely 18.5 volts. So when we made the transition from 220 volts to 230 volts, 
Beringer changed the label on the power brick, but they didn't change the specifications of the transformer inside. Wow. But even with the output voltage reduced to the rated 18.5 volts, the voltage regulators still get rather hot. So I experimented, and it turns out you can reduce the output voltage all the way down to 2 times 15 volts, and the mixer will still work perfectly fine. And that is observing the design rules for the voltage regulators, giving the 15 volt regulators a 3 volt minimum voltage differential. And at 2 times 15 volts, these regulators get warm, but they don't get hot. So at that point, it will be perfectly fine to just attach them to this sheet metal. So that is going to be the repair process for this mixer. I will replace the transformer in the power brick with a 2 times 15 volts type. I'll replace the voltage regulators with the ones that are supposed to go in here, the 15 volt ones. And I'll probably also replace some of the capacitors, the ones that had the excessively high 52 volts across them. But I'll have to order in all these parts, so that's where this video has to end. Let's just turn on the bench amplifier and listen to this mixer for a little bit. Well, as you can hear, the mixer does still work perfectly fine. Thank you for watching.